This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2021 Sunset Trail 188BH. Okay, so let me walk towards the rear here. So, this is your water heater. As you can see, the plug is out or the cap is off and it's drained, right? So, it's empty right now and it's in bypass. Um, the switches to operate it are inside the trailer. Never dry fire it, never run it without water in it. So uh, always make sure, you know, after this, this trailer is winterized right now, but after it's in regular camping mode, you uh, hook up your city water and then you uh, turn the, the hot water uh, tab on and just let it, it'll, it'll like blow out air, uh, then air and water, and eventually you'll get solid water coming out of the hot water side and you'll know that this tank is full. Then you can turn it on, but never do it dry. I'll show you the switches when we get inside. Okay. You have a power awning with LED strip. You got a, a small 110 refrigerator, 110 AC, so as soon as you plug the trailer in, it turns on. That's just a service panel for the refrigerator. You have a power and, and cable and, and uh, antenna and satellite, whatever you want to hook up to your TV if you want to put one out here. That's your furnace vent, of course. And this is your uh, your hitch. It's a Husky center line weight distribution hitch. So we'll show you how that operates when you when you pick up your trailer. You have a 20 pound LP tank. You have a deep cycle marine battery. And this red switch here is the kill switch for the battery. You can shut it off so it doesn't drain down as quickly if you put it in storage. Um, there are phantom powers drawn from some of the things in here like the, the carbon monoxide LP gas detector, that sort of thing. So even if you shut all the lights and everything off, it's still going to pull power. So when you put it in the storage, just disconnect it right there. Okay? This is how you get water to the trailer. The most common way is city water, which is right here. You just hook, put the hose on there, turn it on, and you're ready to go. Um, now if you go to a campground that does not have plumbing on the campsites, like some of the state parks, for example, uh, they'll have a fill station when you first go in to, through the gate. So you'd pull up to the fill station, you'd fill up your tank right here. Um, and then uh, you can use the onboard pump to pump the water. So every, all the plumbing works just like there was city water, even if you're pumping from the tank. Also, keep in mind you can dump your fresh water tank when you leave very quickly using this, that white gate valve right there that you see. That's the fresh water dump. And, uh, so you don't have to drive around with it. Okay, so your slide room, uh, there's different types. This one happens to be an Accu slide. So, you know, Accu slide is a, is a specific specific style, and that's what you have, just in case you need to know that or anybody asks, okay? Um, this is just an outside shower. This is your, your black tank flush. So what we have here, we have your black tank valve and a gray tank valve. The black tank, of course, is toilet water and waste. The gray tank is sink and shower water. So you dump the black first, then you use the gray water to sort of clean it out, even though it's dirty water is not as dirty as the black water, right? But then if you leave this valve open, like it says on the sticker here, hook your hose at the dump station right here, turn it on, it'll spray out the, the uh, black tank. It will, uh, clean off the sensors, that sort of thing, it's just a, it's just a good thing to do. So um, if you can, if, if you have water at the dump station, make sure you flush it. Okay, your, these are your stabilizers. They work on it with a three quarter inch crank or a three quarter inch socket uh, on a drill. Uh, you, know, you don't lift the trailer with them, you just take the wiggle out of it so people don't get seasick. Your, your hookups are here for your, for your audio or your video stuff, your uh, satellite and campground cable, that sort of thing. Um, this is your power cord right here. It's kind of tucked back here, but nevertheless, that's it. And um, it's 30 amps and 30 feet long. So you always got that. Now this housing here tells us this is pre-wired for a backup camera. So we do sell them here. Uh, uh, and it's quick to install, so uh, takes a Furion camera, so even if you buy it someplace else, make sure you get the Furion camera that fits in the housing.
right. We got a ladder here, which is great because you can inspect your roof regularly. The manufacturer says every 90 days. So you want to go out there, look at all the sealant, uh, and make sure there's no cracking or separation. You look at the roofing material, make sure that there's no damage from low tree branches or road debris flying up, that sort of thing. Look at the vent covers, just give it a good inspection. And if uh, you see something wrong, get it taken care of immediately. That's very important. Inspecting in a way, inspecting your roof and your seals are uh, is probably the most important thing you can do as a trailer owner. That and winterizing it. Okay. So um, here, this is your awning switch here. You can see there it goes in. And so never leave it out unattended. You don't want the weather to get a hold of it and, and damage it. It can happen very quickly. All right. And of course, there's your slide out, like I said. Um, your awning light, all your other lights. Uh, I told you you had an onboard water pump. That's right here. Uh, you can use that to pump water out of the fresh water tank. We also use it during, for winterizing the trailer. Um, this is the water heater on gas or on electric. Like I said, never dry fire it. Always uh, make sure that there's water in it in the tank before you uh, before you turn any energy source on okay so your battery is charged fresh water is empty you only have one black tank so that's empty gray tank so uh, they grudge as they light up they graduate up in one third increments once you get past two thirds you're gonna have to start thinking about dumping the gray in the black tank okay this this uh, you're just gonna light it turn it on and light it with a lighter uh, that's your furnace there, and there's the thermostat. Make sure the, to shut it off, you're all the way to the left like that, until you hear it click. Um, if you turn it on, you obviously go to the right. Um, so, this device down here is your power converter. It converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. So you got regular household style circuit breakers here, just like at home, and they're labeled. But then the power is converted down to 12 volt or over to 12 volt DC. Uh, right here um, and they have you see regular automotive type fuses and they're labeled if any of those fuses were to blow they'll actually light up and you can see them through this plastic here okay also when you're plugged in this is a battery tender it'll check how much energy your battery has and needs and it'll send it two amps ten amps whatever it needs to keep it charged this right here is your is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector and your uh, low battery alarm so if it, if it detects uh, carbon monoxide or LP gas, it'll go off. And if it goes off really slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. So I'll give you the, put it through the self-test so you can hear it. Now the low battery. And then back to green. So if, obviously if it goes off, you take everybody outside, leave the door open. Shut the gas off at the front and figure out what's going on. Okay. Um, let's see. Your refrigerator is right here. It's a gas absorption type refrigerator. So you're just going to turn it on here. Right. Right now it's on auto electric, and that's gas electric there. So basically, um, your your. Uh, or, so I'm sorry, that's that's gas right there. Um, when you when you turn it on, you can select electricity separately, gas separately, or you can go to auto. You're going to go to auto. But the reason being, you it'll always seek out electricity first. Then, if it can't find it, it will uh, it'll switch to gas. And if okay. If let's say you, you leave for the day, you're out exploring and you're, you're, it's a hot day and halfway through the day the campground uses its, loses its power, um, it'll automatically switch over to gas for you so you don't spoil the food. Okay, I went a long way to say that, but I think I got it out. Auto is the preferred, for preferred mode to be in. Okay, so your, your microwave works like any other microwave. Of course your, um, Hide a bed, your Murphy bed will fold down. You just jackknife this couch flat and it folds down right over it. It's a great thing because you know you get you move the bed out of the way during the day and reclaim that floor space, and you got a decent couch to sit on too, so you're not always stuck sitting in the dinette. So it's a really a I, I, I'm a big uh, big fan of it. So 
Alright, so you can also drop the table down and turn it into a bed. You have two bunks, of course, your TV set. The you know, thing to know about the bathroom is the second shower works like any other second shower, but the, the toilet has a flush pedal on it. And right below it, that's um that's the black tank down there. So right now the black tank's empty. So what you would do is when you get to the campsite, you would you hook up your power and water, then you come in here, and because the black tank's empty, you step on the pedal, water will come swirling around, and you just put about a gallon or so in that tank. You can't really use it dry um, because the smell will be bad. It's just a it just a it has to have water to operate properly. So you always put some in at the beginning. It doesn't have to be exact by any means. Just get some water in there when you first start off. Okay. You also run your fan. Whoops. Run your fan with the shower to pull the humidity out also so you don't create conditions where mold or mildew would, would grow. Okay. All right. So I'm looking around here to see if I forgot anything. I think I've got everything. That's obviously your air conditioner up there. And you've got storage under here. So... Okay, thank you for buying your trailer here at National RV Detroit. And remember what I said about inspecting your roof every 90 days, have somebody look at it. Um, also, right now it's in it's winterized with antifreeze in the system and the water heater is bypassed. Okay, thank you very much.